If you've ever wondered to yourself how language originated in our species, you wouldn't be the first to have done so. This has been a puzzle to mankind for the longest while. In fact, there are numerous folk mythologies about how human beings first started to use language from all across the world and some of them thousands of years old. The Hindu Vedas talk about Vak, the goddess of communication and speech, the physical embodiment of language. In ancient Norse mythology, Odin's brother, they is credited with giving humans the ability to use language. The West African Yoruba deity Esho is a trickster who acts as the messenger of the gods or Orishas and is said to have granted humans the ability to speak. And the most popular mythology of all comes from the Hebrew folklore where their deity Yahweh gave language to Adam and Eve. All of these legends and mythologies were our first attempts at thinking through the origin of language. Note that I am using the word language and not languages. This is an important distinction. When I say language, I am referring to the human system of communication, which is either spoken or signed. Languages or a language has to do with the system of communication used by a group of humans living in a specific location, like Canada, or are part of a specific community, like Afro-Canadian young persons in Toronto. The language in a geographical location or a community can change as a result of time, migration, intermarriage, and a host of other factors. But it still leaves the question, how did the first humans learn to use language? Well, the short answer is, we don't know. There's currently no definitive scientific explanation. One of the more persuasive explanations is that language arose as a result of five features that human beings possess. Features shared by other non-human species on our planet, but not nearly to the same degree as us. The first of these is that human beings appear to have a genetic predisposition to language. And not only does there seem to be a genetic adaptation which makes language possible, but there is also evidence that language is a localized brain function. Essentially, there are portions of our brain which are used for language that are not as developed even for our closest genetic relatives, the chimps. Humans have very fine motor skills, both vocally as well as with our hands. The position of our vocal cords and the co coordination between our tongue and lips make all sorts of vocalizations possible. And the dexterity in our hands and fingers opens up another world of communicative possibilities. All social animals require some sort of cooperation in their groups but human civilization depends on it. The intricate nature of our social systems in our lives is only made possible through language. Even though we can express an infinite amount of speech, language is really a small set of recurring symbols. This is ideal for human beings since our brains are adapted to strong pattern recognition. Our ability to read minds isn't like the powers of Professor X, but instead has to do with our ability to understand what others intend or imply. It's what we mean by reading between the lines. Many other species on our planet share some of these traits, but humans have all of these traits and to higher degrees than other animals. Language might very well be a byproduct of all these ingredients coming together. There's no telling what might happen one day if another species suddenly evolves all the same ingredients. Let's hope we don't have to find out, since we haven't been very kind to other species on the planet.